Okay, what I want to show here is how you can use one Flash movie to call other Flash movies randomly. And I used that to set up this game. So I'm kind of showing you the end result first, which is uh, here's a game that if I refresh it, it's going to change always what the complement is. So um, in this game, you're trying to learn your complementary colors. So what are the complementary colors of yellow and blue? Those are the targets you're supposed to eat up in this game. So yellow and blue, that would be purple and uh, orange. Okay, so those would be our targets. Let me refresh again. Now it's looking for the complementary colors to orange and red. And now yellow and blue, and then green and purple. So it's always keeping it kind of interesting for the player. So let's move this out of the way and see how we did this. Um, on my timeline here, I've got... Uh, the first frame has this code in it. Rand is just a variable name. And it's calling the function built into Flash, ActionScript 2.0, um, called random. And I'm asking for three possibilities. And a trace is just a way to uh, trace what the Rand value is. And so I can go to Window, Development Panels, Output, and the trace will show up here when I'm doing my testing. So it'll show me, it'll, it'll feed back something like one or two or three as I go through this. So normally I would use trace when I'm coding and then comment it out when I'm done. Switch case is the code I'm using to actually generate, um, to apply this rand value to different variables. So let's say that the random value came back as one. That would mean that case zero gets selected which means the variable, my variable, would be equal to color game one dot SWF. That's the first version of my game. Then I would have a little end of statement and I would have a break. And if you don't do the break, it just goes to the next case. So you have to do the break. Then uh, if my random value was equal to two, it would be case one that gets launched. And my variable would become color game two dot SWF. And of course you need your break. And the same thing, if random becomes three, that means case two gets launched and you're gonna get color game three dot SWF. Now here I was just doing a little testing and had a variable called box and I was setting it to 12 and 22 and 32 and just watching that message window to see if it was working right. And then in the end, after the curly brackets are opened and shut, I've got a load movie num and that calls another movie in this case, it's calling a movie called My Variable, which might be any of these three. And then it's starting on frame one, and it's an end of statement. And that's all there is to that. And then, if you go to frame three, I've got another little bit of action script that says stop. If I don't have this, it just goes back to frame one and reruns all that code again. And that would pull up another number, and it would get a lot of flickering in your game if you do that. So you don't want that. So that's all there is to that. Notice this is the same size. This game is the same size, 700 by 400, as my actual games are, all three of them. And I think that's all you need to know to try this out. So if you want to try the game out, just go to 3D Cognition, look in the Theory page. Under Theory, you've got a Color section. And there's a little bit about the about color theory. And ne near the bottom, you've got a launch color game. And you may have to click in the screen on the movie to get the thing to work. And then you just use your uh, arrow keys to cruise around and try to gobble up all the circles that are the complementary colors of the challenge here.